Hello and welcome to another video. We're going on a mission today, but it's the story of little Johnny. So little Johnny was using an eight foot ladder to work at home and he placed the ladder against the wall. But while he was working, the foot of the ladder slipped at 0.5 feet per second. That's how fast this thing was moving away from the wall. We just want to know, how fast is the top of the ladder falling? Well, Johnny is definitely falling. Okay, but Johnny must, uh, let's say Johnny was actually right there. How fast was he going down? Well, that's what we're going to do today. This is one of those related rate questions that are very easy to solve, but you just have to know what to do. Before we go on, what do we know? We know the rate at which the foot is moving away from the wall. That would be the rate of change of x. That's dx dt. We're looking for dy dt, the rate at which the top is falling along the wall. What else do we need to find? Well, we need to find the relationship between y and x because the ladder is eight foot long and the height of the ladder or the length of the ladder will not change in this process. So the only thing that depends on something will be that the height will depend on how far away this is. And so that's the only connection we need to establish. And we know that for a right triangle, there's always this Pythagorean rule you can apply. And that's it. Let's get into the video. Okay, now that we know what the mission is, what's the connection? Remember that related rates are just an application of the chain rule. And the chain rule says that if you want to find dy dt, all you need is dy dx. Then you multiply it by dx dt. So right now, this question already gave us dx dt, the rate of change of x with time, which is 0.5. Um, we're looking for dy dt. So what we don't know is dy dx. How do we get dy dx? Remember, Pythagoras rule, okay? Pythagoras rule, or what you call Pythagorean theorem, will help us find the relationship. Let's establish that. So we know from this right triangle that y squared, um, sorry, plus x squared will be equal to eight squared so we can say y squared plus x squared equals 64. Now I want to find dy dx. I'll just differentiate. Well this y is not isolated. I will not spend time trying to isolate it because I can use implicit differentiation. So I'm going to differentiate this implicitly. If you don't know what that is, you gotta go 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 get it go get it known. Okay. So let's just do this. So that will be 2y dy dx plus this is going to be 2x and this would be 0. If you differentiate a constant, you get a 0. Now, let's move this over to this side. You're going to have 2y dy dx will be equal to negative 2x. And if you isolate dy dx, you get dy dx um, will be equal to negative 2x over 2y. Okay, and that simplifies into negative x over y. So you see that we can come back here and rewrite our equation and say dy dt, which is what we're looking for, is dy dx times dx dt. We already know what dx dt is. What is dy dx? Oh, it's right there. It's x over y. Mm, what will x over y be? You know, let's do some little calculations here. Let's say you have a right triangle. Okay. And this is 8. And we are told from the question that x has to be 6. So if x is 6, what you're going to have is this is going to be 6. What will y be? Well, from Pythagorean theorem, um, our y at this instant will be 64 minus 36. You take the square root of that, whatever you get will be your answer. And I think that will be the square root of 28. Okay, so let's just do that here. So we're going to have y will be equal to the square root of 
8 squared minus 6 squared. That would be 8 minus 6 times 8 plus 6, so that would be 28, okay? So it would be the square root of 28, which would be the same thing as 2 rad 7. That's what y is going to be at this point. So we just go in here and plug it in. So at this point, when x equals 6, we say dy dx is going to be negative 6 over 2 rad 7, which is the same thing as negative 3 over rad 7. Well, you know, negative 3 over rad 7, you can rationalize it, and that's going to give you, let's rewrite it. We have dy dx is equal to, if you rationalize this, that means you multiply it by rad 7 over rad 7, and that's going to give you negative 3 rad 7 over 7. That's dy dx. So, let's finish this. Finish it. Okay, dy dt is dy dx times dx dt. dx dt is already given. It's the rate of change of x. Okay, now we can do this and say that dy dx, sorry, dy dt is equal to dy dx, which is now negative 3 rad 7 over 7, negative 3 rad 7 over 7 multiplied by 0 0.5. Well, 0 0.5 can be written as 1 half. So I'm just going to write it as 1 half, 1 over 2. So this is equal to negative 3 rad 7 over 14. Um, because y is measured in feet also, so it's going to be foot per second. Ah, that's dy, the t. So we say the ladder is falling at the rate of negative 3 rad 7 over 14 feet per second. Never stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. Let's put a box around this.